Yo! It has been a very long time! Again, today I'm going to show you the best automatic and manual methods to overclock your GPU safely. Whether you have the latest GPU or an older one like I do, these methods, along with benchmark comparisons, will help you decide which one is right for you. You might be thinking, but Alex, why would I want to overclock my GPU? I've been thinking about this in depth, and I've come up with two main reasons why anyone would be interested in overclocking. Reason number one, to improve Press your little internet friends. Reason number two, to get the most from the hardware you bought. It's a free boost in performance and it's almost like a free upgrade. For example, I've said previously that I have the RTX 2070 and not the Super. My friend has one though, and here's his time spy benchmark of a non-overclocked 2070 Super. Here's a benchmark of my 2070 before overclocking, and here's a benchmark after I manually overclocked it using MSI Afterburner. True, my 2070 is still lagging behind, but as you can see, only just because the overclock raised my overall graphic score by just over 600 and my FPS by 4. This may not seem like a lot in comparison to what the outright liars are saying, like this tool who claims you can go from 32 FPS to over 300 without even showing you one benchmark. Let's throw his disclaimer in that he likes to place on all his videos which says if he destroys a computer he can't be held liable to make him look even more credible. Anywho, I'll be showing you benchmarks so you can compare each method while having a real expectation of the performance boost you can gain in each scenario. A few important things before we start. First thing, this tutorial is meant for desktop computers, not laptops. Do not even think about overclocking your laptop's GPU. Not enough people out there who upload these types of videos say this and it's really important. Excessive heat can lead to a shorter lifespan for your hardware. In desktop cases, the heat can more easily dissipate. We have way more ventilation and cooling options. Since laptops are super compact, it's much harder for them to dissipate heat. I've never overclocked any laptop I've owned and they still died within three years due to excessive heat. This is even when I'd open them to clean them. It was just something that would get worse and worse over time. If you have a laptop, you probably know what I'm talking about. Second thing, your GPU overclock settings and performance results will differ from mine even if we own the same GPU. Each GPU is different and it's basically one big silicon lottery. You may find you'll be able to push your GPU further than I've been able to performance wise. You may not. You don't know until you try. Third and last important thing I want to talk about are some overclocking myths. From what I've noticed, and to be fair I thought this myself before I actually started doing it and seeing how safe it was, people are generally afraid that they'll damage their GPU. It's pretty much impossible to do this even if you were trying to, for whatever reason, maybe you've lost your goddamn mind, because GPUs now come pre-programmed with built-in safety measures that prevent you from changing values beyond what Nvidia or AMD consider to be safe. Yes, I am saying Nvidia video, right? Thanks for noticing. These safeguards are built into the GPU's processor and drivers, which monitor power usage and core temperatures. For example, if your GPU gets too hot to cool itself down, it will automatically use thermal throttling to reduce its workload and clock speeds, which is really bad if you want more performance. Lower temperatures are super important for a good overclock, which is why I'll go over safe temperatures and how to achieve them later when I show you how to automatically and manually overclock. Another reason people are afraid to overclock clock is because they believe it will reduce their GPU's lifespan. There's actually very little evidence out there that supports this and even if it was true, the average person, if they're anything like me, upgrades their GPU every three to four years. By the time any GPU reaches the end of its lifespan, whether it was overclocked or not, it would be completely obsolete. If you're a peasant laptop user, expect your laptop to last three years regardless of what you do. I mean after all, they want you to buy the next piece of overpriced and underperforming trash. If you're thinking, damn but Alex, I really need a lot more performance. I wish I could overclock. My laptop is shite. LOL. Maybe you should have bought a desktop then. Okay, so let's start with an automatic method of overclocking. It won't give you as much of a boost in performance as a manual overclock. The reason I'm going to show you this method is because it's perfect for people who are either on the fence but are interested in overclocking or people who are just starting out who aren't yet confident to manually overclock. I'll be going over what everything does as I'm doing it. You will need to know this stuff before you manually overclock later, so you probably don't want to skip this section. First thing we'll need is MSI Afterburner, which can be used to overclock NVIDIA. Again, I am saying that right. And AMD GPUs. So it is a very good one. Hopefully you guys know how to use Google. Previous comments suggest that some of you don't. So write MSI Afterburner into Google. Click the first result. Download Afterburner. Oh look, it has downloaded. Yeah, yes. May as well install it again. Whatever. Yes, English. I speak very good English. 
Bam! Done. Wow. 48 degrees already. Woohoo! Okay, so first thing, click settings, come over here, and tick these two. So you want to unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring. Make sure force constant voltage is unticked because you want the temperatures to come down. If you aren't playing games or doing anything at your PC, if it's ticked, it will remain constant. So once you're done, click apply, click yes, then afterburner will restart. So first thing you'll notice is that the core voltage slider at the top won't be grayed out anymore. I've actually seen some GPUs where it is grayed out and that's perfectly fine if yours still is even after unlocking voltage control Maybe it won't even let you tick those options if afterburner lets you unlock the voltage though Put the slider all the way up so it can take what it needs if it needs it The only time I would suggest not touching this slider is if you unlocked voltage control in the BIOS itself One reason you may have done this is if you overclocked your CPU in the past I said a little earlier that if temperatures are too high the GPU will use thermal throttling to reduce its workload we never want that to happen, so now we're going to be adjusting our fan speeds. Instead of adjusting the fan slider here so the fan speed remains constantly low, like I've seen some mentally challenged people on YouTube suggest, we're going to ensure the program automatically adjusts our fan speeds, giving the GPU its best chance to maintain those higher stable clock speeds. Overclocking will increase your GPU's temperature because you're asking for more performance. So you should be taking GPU temperatures seriously. Click settings. Click fan, and then tick enable user defined, well it's the only option on the goddamn page, so click that. So in my opinion, the default fan curve is pretty meh. I personally like a more aggressive fan curve, so I recommend deleting these two points by clicking on each one and pressing delete. Click and drag this point over, so where it says 85 on the temperature. Drag this one up to 50, and you want to make it so that it says 25 down here. So what this will do is it'll make the fans run at 50% fan speed by default. Then, once the GPU's temp hits 25 degrees, the fan speed will increase. Please don't think I mean Fahrenheit. I'm in Australia, and we use the superior metric system like the rest of the world, not the imperial system that only three countries in the world use because it sucks. So click apply, you'll hear your fan ramp up, and now click OK. So now we've put this all the way up, and we've got the program adjusting our fan speeds automatically. So now what you have to do is you have to increase the power limit and the temp limit. So put them all the way up. You'll notice that the temp limit also moves with the power power limit because they're both linked. Your top values will be different from my top values because as I said earlier, your hardware and drivers determine which values you're safely able to raise them to, and MSI Afterburner won't allow you to raise them beyond what is considered safe as specified by your GPU. Because of this, I know that the maximum temperature my GPU can handle is 88 degrees, so as a guide, for any NVIDIA GPU, you never want the temperature to hit 80 degrees Celsius, and for AMD cards, you never want the temperature to hit 90 degrees degrees Celsius. So this is to avoid thermal throttling. Unfortunately, I only have a stock cooler. I personally can't afford to hire a team of scientists to constantly pour liquid nitrogen directly onto my GPU like the majority of you rich boys out there. For me personally, I'd be happy if I can keep my GPU's temperature around 70 degrees. This is during the stress test when we manually overclock later. Make sure you click the big tick so it can apply the settings. So now we have all that set up, we're going to use OC scanner right here to automatically overclock our GPU. So click Click here to open OC Scanner, and BAM! Before we continue, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how OC Scanner works, just in case you're already sweating and thinking, Oh shit, Alex is about to show me how to destroy my computer. To be fair, with some of the comments I get held for review sometimes, I gotta admit, it's rather tempting. Lucky for you, most of my comments are super cute, and I don't want to let those people down. Alright, so OC Scanner uses an algorithm developed by NVIDIA, and the way it works is when you click Scan, it will start by increasing your clock speed by one step, and then it will stress test the GPU to see if it's stable. If the clock speed is stable, it will be increased by another step and so on, until it finds the point where the GPU can't maintain its stability under the load. When that happens, the algorithm will tell it to use the last known stable clock speed, and that's what will be set as the maximum value. Higher voltages are required to sustain higher clock speeds, which is why different voltage levels will also be tested during the process, and why we needed to unlock the voltage control earlier. So click scan now. The process will take around 15 minutes. This gives you plenty of time to smash every laptop you have in your house if you own any. I'm gonna stop recording now so I can just let it do its thing. Be right back if my computer doesn't catch fire like it did last time I did this. Ha! <laughs> just kidding. Something you can do while this is happening is to keep an eye on the GPU temperature here. So don't forget, push the button thing. Be right back. 
Yes. All right. So a fun thing that just happened right now. OC Scanner gave me this error message, which I've never seen before. I've used OC Scanner a bunch of times previously and every scan was successful, but it seems the latest version has problems. I don't know if everyone will experience this problem on this build or just people with my GPU. I'm hoping whatever the hell they did to screw it up that it's fixed by the time you watch this. But I'll be finishing the rest of this tutorial on a slightly earlier build because I know in this build, OC Scanner actually works for me. When your test is successful, there are two values you should write down. Your values will be different from mine. Write down your average core overclock value and your memory overclock value because when manually overclocking later, you can enter those in as your starting point and it will save you a bunch of time. Back to the video. So here we are using an earlier version. When the test has finished successfully, you'll see that it will now show curve instead of a number right here in the core clock section. One more thing, press the big tick here so it can apply the automatic overclock settings. Don't forget like I just did, had to automatically overclock again because it erased my settings. To test the stability of your overclock, press test. Not really an important feature, which is why I saw revert next to the test button in the latest version. Not sure why they would replace this with another useless button, because if you click this button right here, it'll do exactly the same thing as revert. I'm gonna click test to show you what this button does. Gonna stop recording again for the hundredth time. Gonna be absolute hell to edit. So once the test finishes, it will present you with a confidence level similar to what I have when I say all laptops suck ass, which is 90%. And it makes sense because it's already testing things during the scan phase. I doubt it would choose and transfer trash settings to be the most stable overclock because that would make like a no sense. So if nothing went wrong during the scan phase, click the startup button here. What this does is it adds it to the task scheduler so that the settings will be applied whenever Windows starts or a user logs in. This means you don't actually have to have MSI Afterburner open or minimized for the overclock or fan speeds to be applied. It's always important to do this last once you've found the stable overclock. I've seen one mentally challenged person on YouTube. By now you probably know which one. May or may not have a disclaimer saying if you destroy your computer following his advice it isn't his fault. But anyway I've seen one guy open MSI Afterburner and the first thing he does is press this button before he even begins the overclock. If anything happens during the overclock, remember those fail safes I mentioned earlier built into the hardware and drivers? There isn't a risk of anything happening when you automatically overclock by the way because the algorithm does everything for you. But if you aren't patient when we manually overclock later, your computer could reboot to protect your graphics card from harm. Which I will now demonstrate. Okay, so we're gonna come over here, see the curve. So I know my GPU can handle 125. Okay, so let's try a thousand and then click apply. Oh, hang on, I forgot the startup button. So this should produce a pretty hardcore crash. Apply. Dude, nothing's happening. I just overclocked to a thousand. Nice, maybe I can finally play Cyberpunk. Maybe it'll actually work. Oh my God, what the fuck is happening to my computer? So I'm guessing this isn't normal, so I'm just gonna reset my computer. Remember, we chose startup. So let's see what happens when we try to log into Windows. All right, so I'm just logging into Windows and this just happened. So now we're going to reset again. Damn, all I wanted to do was play Cyberpunk. God damn, that game is trash. Keeps crashing my computer. CD Projekt Red, what the fuck are you doing? Okay, so I'm gonna log in now. And then when I press enter, I'm going to press control. Okay, it's logging in. And as you can see, pressing control fixed it. Very nice. So now let's load MSI Afterburner. So as you can see, my GPU and everything is fine. MSI Afterburner put all my settings back to default. What I just showed you is that you cannot screw up your GPU while overclocking in Afterburner. Cause a lot of people would think they did if their computer rebooted and even more so if they got stuck in a never ending boot loop. Thanks to the low IQs out there making videos telling people to press the startup button before they even start overclocking. So if you run into the boot loop, just do what I did which was press control while you log in and it should stop happening. And if that doesn't work, boot into safe mode, load afterburner, and then disable the startup button. Because pressing this to disable it removes it from the task scheduler, reboot, and then everything should be fine. I just tried that myself and it does work. But if that doesn't work, boot into safe mode again, uninstall afterburner, and then Windows should boot up normally. Apart from that one time just now, I've personally never had a system reboot happen to me while overclocking because I've always been extremely patient. You can also click here to save 
save your profiles in case you want to switch between your default values and your overclocked profile. And then you just press any one of these numbers. So one, and to delete a profile, just right click the one you want to get rid of. All right, so moment of truth. Here's my time spy benchmark before overclocking. And here it is now. Remember, your results could either be worse or better than mine because every GPU is different. Hopefully you have better results because Jesus Christ, don't forget to tell all your friends Alex helped you almost get one extra FPS. To be fair though, it's extremely hard to raise your time spy score or FPS in any way other than overclocking. It is possible though to raise your score slightly by making some tweaks to the Nvidia control panel. I've already made a video about this. It was in the card you saw pop out around the two and a half minute mark in this video. The information is valuable. In my opinion, a performance increase of 2% and an extra 1.19 FPS increase after using a program that overclocks your GPU by pretty much doing it all for you in under 10 minutes is pretty good. If you've been following along, congrats, you just overclocked your graphics card. Be sure to let me know what your results are in the comments below because I am legit curious. Here's the benchmark I showed earlier of my manual overclock just so everything is here. A manual overclock will always give you more performance than an automatic overclock every time. In my case, it gave me a performance increase of 6.4% and just over 4 FPS. Okay, so let's get started with the manual overclock. I'm going to press this button so it'll revert back to my default settings. Two very important things to note. The first is that you'll notice that it'll keep the apply settings at startup option on, so click it to make sure it's turned off. The other thing is that it will also put your fan settings back to default, so go back into your fan settings and change it back to what you had for the automatic overclock. Remember to click apply. Don't make me come over there, break into your house and make sure you've pressed apply. Apply the settings. Don't forget, just press the bell tin. So then put core voltage, power limit and temp limit all the way up again. Click the big tick. Don't make me come over there. Alright, so there are a range of tools you can use to test the stability of your overclock and it's important to choose one that will put as much load on the GPU as possible because only then will you be able to determine if your settings are actually stable. Some people use Heaven or Valley Benchmark. The one we'll be using is MSI Combustor. Reasons I like MSI Combustor is that it's literally one click, has all the important stats you'll need on the screen as it's stress testing, and will most definitely max out your GPU load, which is what we want. One thing that annoys me about it is that it doesn't automatically install with Afterburner, which doesn't really make much sense, especially when MSI feature the button for it on the front and in the middle of their own goddamn program. So for you guys, it'll be blanked out. I've installed it previously. All right, so here we are again. Write MSI Combustor into Google, download it from the first result, which you'll also notice that the program created by MSI isn't even actually located on MSI's site to make things even more convenient for everybody. But don't worry, these guys were actually given permission to host MSI Combustor. So once you've downloaded and installed it, close Afterburner and when you reopen it, the button will now allow you to click on it. So open Combustor and then you'll see this. You literally don't have to change a single thing because the stress test we're going to use is already selected from the moment the program opens. You also don't need to change the resolution because you can change it while it's running. So click run stress test and as you can see, it should max out your GPU load pretty much instantly. But if you find that it doesn't put between a 97 to 99% load on your GPU, I'm sure one of the other tests you can find here will. Just make sure it's a GPU test and not one that stress tests your CPU because they also have those. So with the stress test open, what I recommend you do is wait 15 minutes to get your GPU nice and hot and for the temps over here to level out. All right, so it's been 17 minutes and I'm really not liking how high my temps are getting because I know that they'll get even hotter while I'm overclocking. Those of you who have water cooling are probably laughing at me. If you are, I hope right at this moment, the tubing comes loose and water leaks throughout your whole computer, completely and utterly destroying it. If anyone in my situation notices their GPU temperature getting close to 80, go back into Afterburner's fan settings. I really don't want my GPU's temperature to reach beyond 75 degrees Celsius, so I'll just make it so that if it does hit 75, that my fans will spin at 100%. To be fair, pretty sure with this fan curve they won't. Press supply. You can do it, GPU! I believe in you! So before we begin, I want to go over some of the common things that will happen while Combustor is running and why you're playing around with these values, because you will inevitably choose a value beyond what your GPU is capable of. So the most common things I've experienced are either MSI Combustor will freeze or my screen will go black for a few seconds. Another thing you might see are graphical artifacts, which kind of looks like your GPU is throwing a party. This usually means that you've gone way too far with the memory clock and will have to scale it back. The least common thing to happen is what I showed you earlier, where your computer reboots 
to save your graphics card from harm? It's important to start with the core clock first and get that right before you move on to memory clock, because if you're moving both sliders at the same time and combustor crashes, then you won't know which one caused it. You should always be starting with the core clock anyway. Alright, so now the fun stuff. If you have your average core clock value from the OC scanner earlier in this tutorial, just write it in here and press apply. If you don't have that value, that's completely fine. Just enter 50, which I think is a good starting point, and then press apply. Get into the habit of pressing apply every time you make a change. Don't forget like I did the first time overclocking and was like, I will know what was my last value, yeah yes. So what you're going to do is raise the core clock by 15 each time, then wait 5 minutes before raising it again. MSI combustor will most likely freeze and then close within 5 minutes if you've pushed your core clock too far. If combustor freezes, load it again, and then wait for your GPU to heat up, then put in the last value you had that went the whole 5 minutes where combustor didn't freeze. And once you've entered that value, wait 30 minutes to see if combustor freezes. If it doesn't, that value is likely stable and you can save that profile. So for my GPU, I was able to get my core clock to 115. When I tried 130, combustor froze, so I scaled it back by 15, tested it for 30 minutes, and then everything went well. By the way, whenever combustor freezes and closes at any time while you're stress testing, make sure the number down here doesn't show 100 when you load it back up again. Because when it does show 100, this means Afterburner reset your core voltage, power limit, and temp limit values, even though you'd look at Afterburner and see the sliders were still raised. This was just something I noticed when I was messing around with combustor before recording the video. I was wondering why it was saying 100 down here while it was still showing 109 on the GPU power limit value. It wasn't until after I closed combustor and afterburner, then reopened them, that I noticed it had put the most important sliders needed for overclocking back to their default values. Isn't this such an amazing piece of software? I mean, first, OC scanner comes up with an error when I tell it to do what it was designed to do, which is to automatically overclock, and now there's this glitch that tells you nothing has changed when it has while you're fine-tuning your manual overclock. The reason I'm in rant mode is because I just fell into this trap myself and wasted two hours. On the off chance anyone from MSI is watching this, I'd just like to say, please be different. I mean, with how this software currently works, I can only assume a child intern works on updating it in their spare time. Perhaps add one more child to double the odds one of them would notice things like this, because they're pretty major. Anywho, once you've stress tested the last stable core clock value you entered for 30 minutes without combustor freezing or anything weird happening, come over here and save your profile. So now we've done that, we're going to be raising the memory clock. Raising the memory clock will give you the biggest boost in FPS in comparison to raising the core clock, which is the main reason OC Scanner only gave me one FPS more. I'm assuming in a future update it will tweak both of them, which is why I'm going to say if the scan mode in your OC Scanner gave you an average memory clock number earlier, the police are after me! If the scan mode in your OC scanner gave you an average memory clock number earlier, enter it in here now. If you weren't given any number for the memory clock, start at 200, which I think is a good starting point. Press apply. So what you're going to be doing here is exactly the same thing you did with the core clock, except that you're going to be adding 25 to the memory clock each time. Every time you add 25 to your memory clock, press apply and wait 5 minutes before raising it again. During the 5 minutes, be sure to watch closely for any graphical artifacts because if you you do see any, this means that you've pushed your memory clock too far. You can make the combustor window larger so you can see them easier. Here's an example of what graphical artifacts look like. On older GPUs, they might look like little rectangles on your screen or something different to what you see here. When you notice graphical artifacts, scale your memory clock back by 25 and then watch closely for 5 minutes. If combustor freezes or your screen goes black, which can also happen if you've pushed your memory clock too far, decrease your memory clock by 25, load combustor again, make sure the glitch in afterburner I mentioned earlier didn't happen where the GPU's power limit gets changed back to its stock value, then wait for your GPU to heat up again. Keep doing all of these things until you reach the point where you know you can't raise your memory clock higher without combustor closing, freezing, or graphical artifacts appearing. So when you've found this value, keep combustor running for 30 minutes to test it. If combustor doesn't close, freeze, or your GPU doesn't throw you a party in those 30 minutes, this means that your memory clock is stable and you can come over here and save your profile. And finally, you can close Click here so the settings will be enabled when Windows starts. One last thing, the reason I recommend using your eyes instead of turning on the artifact scanner option here is that if you purely went by the artifact scanner's results, your memory clock could be sitting at 300 megahertz less. When I was testing this feature, I noticed no graphical artifacts when 825 was added onto the memory clock, but artifact scanner kept saying there were graphical artifacts even when this number was 500. But anyway, congrats, you've overclocked your graphics card, enjoy the performance! 
performance boost to it, eh? Don't be afraid to use afterburner again in the future if you need to. Manual overclocking can be a very finicky process. You may think you found the perfect settings, then one day you play a game and something happens, like both your screens turn black for a few seconds when you've been playing it for a long time. Could be the game itself, could be that you need to stress test again in Combustor and make some changes to your settings. I've actually fine-tuned my settings once or twice over time. It's just a normal part of the process of manual overclocking, but in my opinion, the results are worth the time it takes to get it right. Personally, I actually enjoyed tinkering around with the settings, even though it took me goddamn hours. Be sure to tell me how far you were able to push your GPU in the comments. I'm really hoping that I won the Silicon Lottery out of all the people watching who have the same GPU as me, because if you got more of a performance boost out of yours than I did, the person who showed you how to do it, well, that isn't really fair, is it? If you did manage to get more performance than me, I hope you rebooted your computer at bare minimum 1,000 times during your stress tests. I don't know what my next video is going to be, probably another performance-related video. See you when I upload it in a year's time, but I hope you have a good one today.